Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. We do begin first at four with breaking news in the murder of the four University of Idaho students. A man is now in custody for the killings. Court records show 28 year old Brian Koberger is being held in a northeast Pennsylvania jail waiting to be extradited to Idaho on a warrant for first degree murder. The four students ages 21 and 20 were likely asleep when they were stabbed multiple times in an off campus home. This was back in November. Police are giving an update on the arrest at any moment. We will bring you any updates here on air and online at clickondetroit.com. Our other top story is your forewarned weather on a final Friday, which is pretty rainy in 2022. Kim is here with when you can expect rain for the weekend. And Kim, I have a feeling that we need our umbrellas. Yes, you do need your umbrellas tonight and for the first part of tomorrow. But at this point, it's looking like it could dry out just in time for all the celebrations New Year's Eve. But if you're headed out tonight, you do need to take along an umbrella and just be aware that there are some pockets of heavier rain, especially north and west of the city in Howell and Brighton, downtown Detroit, getting light rain at this hour as well. And it's mild out there. Can you believe one week ago today we were in the single digits and now it's 53 at Metro 55 at City Airport 52 in Pontiac. The cool spot if you can call it cool is in Howell at 49 degrees. We are 10 degrees warmer than it was at the same time yesterday in Mount Clemens. Tomorrow we get rid of the uh, cool or the warm temperatures, but uh, we are also going to get rid of that rain. It looks like by New Year's Eve. Now, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest forecast information, all you have to do is download the forewarn weather app. It's free. Go to your favorite app store. Just type in WDIV and download the forewarn weather app today. All right, Kim, thank you. In 24 hours, the University of Michigan will begin its chase for the National College Football Championship. The Wolverines take on the TCU Horned Frogs at this time tomorrow in the Fiesta Bowl. The team is ready. The fans are pumped, and our Hobie Arteague is in Scottsdale, Arizona right now for all of it. Hey, Hobie. Hey, Pamela, yes, the Fiesta Bowl party is already underway as Michigan gets ready to take on those TCU Horn Frogs in the Fiesta Bowl as they begin their chase for a national championship. Now, the, cal the college football playoff, that was announced back on December 4th. These two teams have waited almost a month because here we are on December 30th, and let's just say that both teams are ready to hit that field tomorrow as they get ready to battle for a spot in the national championship game. Now, for Michigan, this is their second straight trip to the college football semifinal while TCU is making their first ever visit to the college football playoff. Now the Wolverines already have their first 13 win season in school history, but now the hard work, it continues. Another two wins this year would give them their first national title since 1997, but their sole focus right now is getting through TCU. And after weeks of talking about it, Jim Harbaugh, let's just say he's ready to go. Now it's time to go. Uh, go play the game and let it rip. And um, our guys are, are excited to do it. Um, you know, people just don't, not everybody gets this, this opportunity. I mean, hardly anybody, you know, gets this kind of opportunity. And, um, you know, it's the best of the best, playing the best. Now, a pep rally is about to get underway here in Scottsdale. This is an alumni and admissions uh, visit and get together for prospective students here in Arizona. But the big party, of course, coming up tonight and coming up at five o'clock, we'll introduce you to some fans who made the trip. And also we'll get a very unconventional prediction that I think Wolverines fans, well, they might like. We'll have much more on that coming up. But for now, we're live in Arizona. Hobie Arteague, Local 4. All right, Hobie, thank you. We'll see you back here at five. Hobie will be joining Jamie Edmonds for our Chasing the Championship special tonight, only on Local 4 Plus. We'll have live coverage from the Fiesta Bowl. You see Hobie's already there, streaming on Local 4 Plus at 6.30. Starting this weekend, Detroiters who are behind on their water bill could face the possibility of their water being shut off. The city's COVID era moratorium on shutoffs, it expires in the new year. The city says if it doesn't start collecting the debt, it may have to add rates to next year. About 60,000 Detroit water customers are behind on their bills right now. There are options and payment plans. We do have all that information for you on our homepage. Click on Detroit.com. 
A House committee releases six years of former President Trump's federal tax returns showing he paid relatively little in taxes in the years before and then during his presidency. The former president was fighting the release, becoming the first president in decades to not voluntarily release his returns to the public. The returns show Trump paid just $750 in federal income tax back in 2017 and nothing in 2020. He paid a combined $1.1 million in 2018 and 2019. In a campaign video, Trump is calling the release an outrageous abuse of power. The team at NBC News is digging through the returns and we'll have more on what's in them in a report from Washington that's coming up at 5. Some potential good news from Southwest Airlines. Fewer than 50 flights were canceled for today following a disastrous week of travel. Here at home at Metro Airport, there are no Southwest flights canceled today. And across the U.S., only 40 flights canceled. Although, as of right now, the airline has delayed over 600 flights. Southwest executives say the airline is back to normal operations and plans to fly about 4,000 flights today. All this comes after the airline grounded more than 15,000 flights in the last week. That left thousands of passengers stranded for the holidays. First at four, we are rounding out our look back at our favorite stories of 2022. And it might not be the halftime show at the Super Bowl, but a local high school drumline is raising the stakes when it comes to the performance. They are literally playing with fire. Paula Tutman traveled to Clinton Township to the home of the Big Reds to meet some performers who have um, the town of, in their seats during halftime. <laughs> Friday night lights like no other in Clinton Township. It was the usual excitement of a Friday night football game. The Chippewa Valley High School Big Reds are off the field and the drum line takes center stage, but no one goes to get popcorn. A fire alarm siren sounds and things only heat up from there. A stunt, flaming drumsticks, and the crowd goes wild. And the cheerleaders are right to the side of them and they're cheering and they're right by the Rowdy Red Zone student section and they're going crazy. And people are just gathered by the fence as close as they can be with their phones and video and it was, it was exciting. 11 percussionists, most of them seniors, are also having one heck of a season. It was really weird and stuff having like people actually, you know, like enjoy drumline and band and stuff like that because typically it's just you know something we're there to fill just silence we basically built the band i would say <laughs> like we're what made everyone love it this year they decided to up the ante and not just be filler to entertain a void they made a conscious decision to be the cool kids and amp things up and build a legacy squad jordan monroe leads the drum line it's mostly the boys they just come up with just random ideas they find ways to entertain and keep building from there it started with shirt ripping and then we then we moved to um having our tenors play upside down <laughs> because we have this one cadence that's just mainly for tenors, and so they play their solo upside down. Students, sometimes parents will, um, during halftime, they'll get up and go use the restroom, and now we actually have uh, students that are sticking around just to see the drumline play. For this new marquee stunt, safety first. First, we put a layer of protective um, over the drum heads, and that was obviously with the increasing heat, we didn't want them to melt. The drums are coated with fire retardant paint. The drummers wear special heat-resistant gloves and work through a safety protocol before the first drumstick is lit. We actually use uh, tiki torch fluid, lighter fluid, to uh, keep them lit the whole time. More than half the members of this year's drum line are seniors. They will pass the baton to the next group who want to be the cool kids, the ones who really heat things up, the ones who bring it to the games, the ones who steal the show. <laughs> Happy holiday season, everyone. So the reason we loved this particular story was it really illustrated young people thinking beyond themselves and into the future, really leaving a legacy for their school district. And by the way, those weren't costumes they were wearing. It was actual turnout gear that was donated by the local fire department, and they used that gear as their training gear. So big shout out to them. This story was hot for a lot of reasons. Paula Tutman, Local 4.
And we sure hope that you've enjoyed watching some of Paula's best stories from 2020. Who knows what she'll bring us in 2023? Reminder, if you did miss any of her stories, they're posted on our website. Click on Detroit.com. Still to come, it's a crime of opportunity when people are already down. The busy airport where thieves are stealing luggage left behind by all of those Southwest flight cancellations. And a tragedy at one of the country's biggest tourist spots, how two people died at Yosemite National Park. But first, a police officer is fired for what he was caught doing on camera while a woman was being booked into jail. That story next.